What do you feel when you see this album cover? What about this one? What about this one? Uh, from what I can tell, there is a goat giving birth to a man, wearing a chain, and the doctor is also a goat. Can you tell the difference between these three covers? That's right. The goat one is the good one. The artwork for album covers are crucial to me. While it's important for music to have its own feeling and you should get most of it from that, I love how artists can immerse you in the world of an album before you even start listening to it. Maybe it's just me, but I feel like covers for books, movies, and video games are important for marketing, but once you get into them, the content stands on its own. Like the box art of a game doesn't necessarily affect the gameplay experience. But for albums, the music on an album can make a cover better and the cover of an album can make the music feel better. It's a partnership that goes hand hand in hand to create the perfect audio visual journey. <laughs> I sound like a friggin' flat screen TV salesman. But I'm 100% right. But really, album artwork can enhance your listening experience. A lot of times, bad album art can make me feel like I don't even want to listen to the music. Even if the music is good. While there's some covers where you gotta just drop everything and listen to it. Like, look at this. Music is also the only visual marketing medium for art that still has the guts to go crazy with it. While both movies and video games have gone from beautiful, hand-drawn, expressive covers and posters to just boring, shadowy guy holding gun, or a bunch of orange and blue actors of varying sizes, artists in the music world still kind of have the freedom to express their music in an interesting visual way. Rihanna can be one of the biggest pop stars in the world, and her album cover can be her as a freaking blurry little girl with a crown over her eyes eyes covered in braille poetry. Like I said in the album sequencing video, I love the idea of just thinking about the things that go on outside of the actual music making process. Like once you finish an album, after you put years of your life into a body of work that could be over an hour long, how can you decide on one picture that encapsulates the feeling of that entire thing? That's like if you got this tattoo. That's, that's your tattoo. That's you. That's you now. Forever. It becomes a part of who you are. If it's a good cover, it's forever associated with you and your music. One of my favorite things to do pre-pandemic was as soon as I finished making a video, I would relax, kind of take the edge off, you know? Kind of freaking get away from the comment section and drive down to the record store. Flip through the records of the soul section and just pick depending on which covers look the nicest. I'll just pick one now to listen to that album. I like the idea of somebody 70 years ago making a song, not thinking about the fact that in 70 years time, some random kid is gonna pick it up in a record store and listen to it for the first time just based on how it looks after they finish doing a video for a YouTube channel. No, they probably didn't know that. But why did I pick the covers I did? What actually makes an album cover good? The best album covers feel like a doorway into that world. And once you've listened to the album, it makes you want to go back into that world. There's album covers that are so iconic, they've transcended the music, or even the genre itself. You've probably seen some of these covers even if you've never listened to the music. And then there's covers you wish you'd never seen. Sometimes you can just look at an album's artwork and you can tell how the music is gonna feel. When you look at the Watch the Throne cover, you know you're about to listen to something extravagant. No matter how this album actually sounded, it would feel like eating pizza with a gold fork and knife. How do you eat it? With your hands. Come on, this man is on the cover crying in the shower where you don't know if the water is from the tears of your eyes or the, the friggin' shower head. This is actually clever foreshadowing to when you end up doing the exact same thing. Damn, when you look at this cover, you know this man's about to be struggling this whole album. Look at his eyes. There's beats that literally sound like how he looks, bent over and just stumbling. Titanic Rising, I listened to this album because of the cover. I was like, dude, this better make me feel like I'm in Bikini Bottom. And it did not disappoint. Now if we look at this album by Niall Horan. Horan? Hor Horan? Horan. I don't know how I'm supposed to feel. It doesn't even look like he knows what to feel. Why is he just standing on his chair like this? Just, just sit. <sighs> Sit down! How is there so much happening and there's nothing happening with him? Everything is going on and nothing is going on at the same time. This cover might be a masterpiece. A lot of the feelings you get from these covers have to do with color. For me, color is the most important part of the whole process, deciding on what color your music sounds like. Every song has a color. Every song has a feeling that is associated with a color, and that can be shown on the cover. I haven't seen anybody point this out, but in 2015, a lot of the sound of that time was like dark and moody, airy, spacious, and kind of devoid of color. Like it was one long winter in terms of the subject matter and the production for that year. And almost every major album 
album cover reflected that. Especially in hip-hop, a lot of the covers were primarily in whites and blacks and grays. I loved the darker feeling of this year. It, was, it felt like the last year before we just shifted suddenly in 2016 to like a brighter, more colorful year. Suddenly in 2016, there were a lot more artists focused on fun music with more upbeat vibes. And a lot of the covers reflected that. I used to make color playlists based on how the songs would make me feel and how the artwork would match that. Like every time I think of this cover for Depression Cherry, it just feels warm and passionate, you know? And every time I look at this Maroon 5 one, it just pisses me off. What is the, the fonts, the colors, everything? What is going on? Did y'all really put Snapchat filters on your album cover? Different shades of different colors actually have different feelings too. Whether it's like a darker blue, more melancholic versus a brighter blue. I listened to this Casey Musgraves album because it just, it looked like a nice summer day. I was like, dude, I'm in freaking into that. And it was called Golden Hour, bro. What? She got me. What more could I want? I don't even listen to country like that, and she got me off the album cover. Different greens feel different ways, like this one just feels more lush, you know, like a little bit brighter. This darker green makes you feel like you're walking through a friggin' swamp when you listen to it. James Blake has this murky, greenish, brownish, gray cover with these dark clouds, distorted trees, and the first song is just him repeating, I can't believe you don't want to see me, over and over. You're like, oh, so this one is, uh, this is a sad song. Tyler the Creator's Igor with a soft pink behind the dark, jagged, and rough edges of Tyler cut out and pasted on the freaking thing. Gives a great idea about the album sounds, bringing two of Tyler's best sounds together. Depending on how it's done, I love when covers don't 100% fit how the music feels either. Like you look at this album cover from Paramore and it's a freaking looks like a nice day on the beach. The first song starts, it's all happy with Sebastian from Little Mermaid hitting the steel drums, and then Haley Williams starts singing. This is a sad song. On the other hand, sometimes an artist like the Beatles will just give you a, a cover and be like, you fill it in. You listen and you figure it out for yourself. And I respect that. Gambino did the exact same thing this year with this album. And he was also like, figure out the title, figure out the, the song titles, just figure out the album. Speaking of Gambino, color is essential, especially when it's just a close-up shot of your face. This cover for Because the Internet just has such perfect colors. I don't know what it is about it. Good color allows you to just have that shot of your face and make it still within the vibe of the music. For me, if you're gonna put yourself on a cover I like when it's in an interesting or creative way. Like don't just put the same facial expression for three covers in a row. Why is she doing the Debbie Ryan face? Ed Sheeran said, oh that's what we're doing? Bet. If you're gonna put yourself on there, at least do something to stand out. Like interesting color or striking makeup or a cool pose just to shake it up. Or literally just shake it up. Or literally shake it up. Or shake up, shake it up. Lauren Hill has her face on the miseducation of Lauren Hill, but her face is literally etched onto a school desk. When you look at Janelle Monae's dirty computer, is there a more extravagant way to put your face on an album cover? Not only is she covered in diamonds, but there's like a sun behind her. The colors are cool and hot at the same time, which literally describes Janelle Monae to a T. She's got an album where it's like just multiple hers. Like if she's gonna be on a cover, she's gonna be on a cover, you know? Speaking of being on an album cover, here we have Birdman and anamorphing into a bird. If you're gonna pose on your album cover, it's nice if you're wearing something interesting, you know, or posing in an interesting way. Tory Lanez, this man has always had the most annoying album covers to me. He's standing here with his face like this, and in the background it just says, I told you. What did you tell me? What did you tell me, bro? I don't, I would listen to the album and find out, but there's a skit in between every single song. And then on this cover, this is just him with his Huge bald head. It's like he wanted you to know it was bald. He, he didn't just stand normally either. He was like, check it out. You can even have the pose fit how the music feels. Like J. Cole on Forest Hills Drive. This man, this, it just, this just looks nostalgic. Reminiscent on the friggin' roof of a house, dude. I already know we're taking a trip down friggin' memory lane. The Isley Brothers with that beautiful font and a great color that you can almost hear before you even play it. Like you can just tell this is gonna be smooth. R&B does a lot of posing. R&B does a lot of sitting, laying down, standing. For me, the more dramatic you look, the better. Like when you look at Usher's 8701, you know this is about to be an R and B album, not R and B. This is R and B album. And then he did this one. Oh sure, why? On the other hand, we have a lot of album covers and music that are just straight up. These are the kind of albums you could hang up on your freaking wall and not even know there was like music for these things. Like they could go up in a museum. The cold, distant, and jagged mountains of Radiohead's Kid A. The timelessness of the black and white cover on To Pimp a Butterfly. Letting us know that the issues Kendrick talks about aren't going away anytime soon. The black men celebrating in front of the White House while the judge lies lifeless on the ground. No longer able to take away their life's most important currency, time. 
or on planet Pit where Pitbull's face is on the back of this girl's back, showing that he is indeed back. On the other end of the spectrum, there's minimalist covers, which I also love. But these can be difficult for marketing, depending on who you are. If you're big enough, just the artist's name can sell the album. Just Beyonce, boom. Sometimes you don't even need the name. Jay-Z's 444, I said it like it was a freaking Wendy's order. But Jay-Z's 444 it just says this is his 13th studio album. Who's? Who's? It's mine. A lot of artists use minimalist covers to establish a theme that kind of goes through multiple albums. Like Run the Jewels, just their logo. 1975, Daft Punk. Nicki Minaj's pink print is just literally just her fingerprint. Just a, just a stamp of our identity. The color is great, dude. A minimalist cover with good color. <laughs> just... <laughs> At the end of the day though, the music is essential to knowing how you feel about an album cover. Some covers just look bad, and then paired with the combination of the music and time, they just fit perfectly with the album. Life of Pablo is an example of a cover growing on me. I was so against this cover at first. I was like, how did the man who gave us friggin' the graduation cover and My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy cover give us this Microsoft Paint cover? Bro, I hated it so much, I was like going in and changing it to a bunch of random different fan covers. But this cover became so iconic. That style was used everywhere. Every friggin' H&M Forever 21 had their own version of that kind of text. Now listening to it, this artwork is a perfect visual for Kanye's mental state on this album. This man was all over the place. Couldn't figure out if he could choose his family or the entertainment industry. And the color just looks like ultralight beam. Views, same thing. I feel like this cover encapsulates the feeling of listening to a Drake album more than any other Drake album. This joint dropped in late April, so I didn't get a chance to really feel the cover until it became winter again. But as soon as that winter time hit, I could appreciate the cold feeling of the album. Then I felt like I was really driving around in a snowy, dark place. But yeah, I wanted to make a video talking about album covers. You guys seem to like the last video I did about music. And since I love Love music so much. I was like, I should be making more videos about this, you know. Of course, I couldn't talk about every single piece of album artwork out there. So, what are some album covers that have impacted you? What are some covers that make you feel all tingly inside? Let me know in the comments down below. Let's be honest. Whatever you guys name is not gonna top Planet Pit. Mr. Worldwide.